Yo, what's up, Droners? B here from Droner Tech, brought to you by RemotePilot101.com. Check them out. And what we're gonna talk about today is the Mavic 2. I'm joking, it's the Mavic Air 2. And what we're gonna talk about is the preferred camera settings for this drone because I like to fly it and I think it's a lot of fun. So let's get into it. As you guys can see, I have it on right now. I'm gonna walk you guys through just the camera settings that I typically use when I fly as a professional drone cinematographer, depending on what I'm doing. But for the most part, here's the standard camera settings that work. So the first thing is you gotta get right into the app. And as you can see, my beautiful hand, wait, there's one. Yep, there it is, look at those colors, beautiful hand. Um, ooh, manned aircraft nearby. So that is actually the new technology that came with the Mavic Air 2 that lets you know when there's planes nearby, which I've actually never seen that before, which is crazy. I'm sorry, that, that was the first time seeing that. Um, but either, either or, what we're here to talk about today all right, so what, we're, what I'm gonna show you guys today is the preferred camera setting. Man, it really is telling me. It's really telling me that there's a, there must be a, a plane really close. Um, on the bottom right corner, as you guys can see, these are all my camera settings. It's telling me that I'm shooting 4K60 right now. My ISO is at 100. Okay, that's really annoying. So most of your camera settings that you're gonna see for this drone are gonna be in your bottom right corner. So. As you can see, after you, on the bottom right, there's an auto button that does all your camera settings automatically, or you can click it again, and it goes into manual. This is very different from the DJI GO 4 app. This is a much simplified version, but you can still get most of the camera settings out of this that you want. So on the bottom, you see that it tells you how much uh, memory you have on what kind you're shooting. It says 4K60 with nine minutes and 23 seconds left. And you can click that, and it'll also tell you the, the different size of how much space you have left. Um, also, here's your ISO settings. I typically try to keep my ISO as low as I can. The native is 100. That's normally where you want to be, unless you're shooting in a very dark space. You normally don't want to pass 400 ISO on this drone, because otherwise you're getting into very grainy content that's just not going to look or feel good. Um, your shutter speed, I'm not going to go into the actual science of this, but typically what you want to have is you want it to be a multiple of whatever your frame rate is. So right now what my frame rate is is 4K 60, so I have my shutter speed at 120, because 60 to 120. So if I'm shooting at 24 frames, which, you know, 23, 9, 8, 24 frames, then I would want to be closer to 100, because it's about 25. You know, so it goes 25, 100, or 60, 120. So right now, shutter speed should be around 120, because I'm shooting 4K. But if you want to change those settings, you can go up here to the top right, and this goes into all your video, your photo, your settings here. And so typically the way that I normally shoot most things is I'm shooting 4K at 24 frames. Um, obviously whenever I get on set, I talk to the cinematographer or the director of photography and say, hey, what kind of are you shooting on? How do you want me to match to you? What's your frame rate? What's your you know, white balance? All these kind of things. Um, and they'll give you those specifications. But when shooting for myself or wanting my things to look the way I want them to look, typically I shoot 4K 24. If I'm shooting things that are moving quickly, um, like chasing a car or something like that, or like a boat or a jet ski, then I, I, I might uh, err more towards 4K 60. Um, so I go 4K wide, normal shots, um, excuse me, 4K 24 in HDR. And I don't like this. Go into the camera settings. Um, one question a lot of people like to ask me is, do you shoot MPV or MO, uh, MP4 or MOV? Really depends on what you got going on. So MP4 is the most universally accepted type of file format. That's like if you're anybody editing in Premiere on pretty much any, any kind of computer outside of a MacBook, it's great. Even though the MacBook, it'll still work just fine. But if you're gonna be doing everything pretty much on Apple products or whatever, MOV is a better way to go. Just really depends on where you're going. Honestly, you can't really go wrong with either one of them. They're both gonna work for all the programs, but that's just like the, the minor thing. If it's gonna be Mac stuff, Apple stuff, MOV is better. Otherwise, just go with MP4, you'll be good to go. Um, the color settings, obviously you can't really change the color settings here because this is just a drone that doesn't allow you to do that. Normally I like to shoot decently like or log. This camera doesn't have that setting, so that's just what it is. Um, the coding format, H.264, H.265, what's the difference? This actually just gives you a little bit more information at H.265 in the sense of the color space and what you can do with the footage. It gives you just a, a little bit more, but it's worth it. But they're all, to get, you also have to give. And what you have to give up is that in H.265, you cannot shoot, you cannot review the footage immediately. It's gonna be jumpy. 
So you have to process that footage to be able to watch it. You have to transcode it and say, okay, cool, I can watch this footage now. Whereas the H.264 footage, you can just take that card right out, put it in a computer. It's gonna play smooth as long as you can keep up with the 4K footage on the graphics card or whatever, cam whatever uh, computer you're using. Just for the record, camera cameraman and sound man, Cameron decided that we need to move the drone because of the fans on the drone keeping it cool was too loud for y'all. So that's cool, whatever, that's why it disappeared. Either way, um, another thing that I always keep on is my histogram. And the reason I keep the histogram on is that it tells you what your light is doing against the sensor, like where your exposure is. So what you can see is obviously it looks like a graph that's on the bottom left corner of the screen as you can see now. And right now on the left side of the graph represents really dark, the darks on the left on the right side of the screen represents the light and typically what you want to have is that white graph like stuff always towards the middle and the reason you want in the middle is because that means that you're not going underexposed or overexposed you're not peaking on either side so right now it looks like this image that's in front of us is very dark and very light because it is very dark in this room and very light um, it doesn't look it looks like we're peaking on the dark side but not peaking on the light side so typically you want to adjust your shutter speed or your ND filters to be able to adjust for that on a bright sunny day, I typically always have my ND16 or 32 on the drone, and I keep those same exact camera settings that I was saying. Um, you need to have ND filters, because otherwise you're riding your shutter speed when you don't have aperture control, which you do not have on this drone. You're gonna be riding your shutter speed, and you don't want your shutter speed to go up very high, because that's gonna make the image feel unnatural. So make sure you guys have your ND filters that you do apply for sunny and bright shooting days, so that you can make sure that your images feel natural and just, just crispy and good. Um, your white balance, I have it on manual. On a bright sunny day, you normally want to get around 5600. So the white balance is pretty much what's going to make your, your image cooler or warmer. So the rule, of, the rule of thumb that you need to know is typically on a bright sunny day with very few clouds, 5600 is going to make it look like your eye does. On a very cloudy day, you might get up to in the 6000s, like 6200 or 6500. Depending on, again, you have to, I normally recommend that when you start playing with the white balance, you just keep an eye on the image and make sure it feels natural and looks good to you. And then, you know, obviously if you have mixed lighting, you know, where some things are tungsten and some things are daylight, then you kind of just got to slide this until it feels right. Um, but those, that 5600 is a good starting point normally if you're outside flying, which you normally are with the drone, um, on a sunny or partially sunny day. And that's a good starting point. And then you could just play with the slider to get to wherever you need to get to. Also, one other thing you should consider is when you're shooting is looking at the, uh, oops, is looking at the HDR versus normal versus slow motion setting in the 4K setting is typically what you want to look at is the HDR setting means that you have high dynamic range. And what does that mean? You get more information on your highlights and your shadows. That's what that means. But it also takes away your ability to be able to shoot in a higher frame rate because it's more information that you're taking in. So typically I do shoot HDR um, with this because you get more information unless I wanted to shoot something that's moving fast, like I said, like a car or a jet ski or whatever, then where you go into that, you have to go into the normal mode to be able to get the option to go up to 60 frames per second. Um, other than that, um, the zoom setting, I don't particularly use very much. Um, I would only use that for very specific inspection kind of things or whatever. Um, it, does, it takes away from the quality of what you're doing and it's not, it's a digital zoom, it's not an optical zoom. And the difference is, is that the image is just being punched in on, on what you already have. So you're actually losing quality on that and you don't really want to do that. The only drone that is commercially available that has a optical zoom is actually the uh, Mavic 2 zoom. Um, so that drone, you can do, use the zoom and you're not really losing much up to a certain extent, but this drone right here, you're going to be losing stuff. So you typically want to stay on the wide setting. And then when you get down to the 2.7K and all that, then obviously you can go up to um, do, doing the HDR and all that. But normally we're going to be shooting in 4K for most of the things we're doing. And then when you look at the slow motion settings, then obviously, again, you're getting into higher frame rates. Everything has to be at 1080. So 120 frames or 240 frames a second. Typically, I'd stick at the 120 because you're losing a lot of information at 240 on this. It's just not going to look that great. But if you're doing something very specialized and it's like an explosion or something like that, maybe you want to try it in 240. But I still would recommend sticking to the, two, uh, the 120 at 1080 um, because, just because of the image quality and what it's going to look like. So your settings for this drone are pretty limited compared to what you're gonna see on the, the Pro version, the Mavic 2 Pro, or the Inspire 2, or even the, uh, the Phantom 4 Pro, or even the, 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 uh, the, uh, the smaller Phantoms. But this is meant to be more of a prosumer drone with more simplified controls and less camera controls. But I will say, you still do have the ability to pull out some professional looking images from this drone simply because of the sensor, because of what it is capable of. And if you take your time, you really get in these camera settings and make sure you dial in everything that I told you guys about today, then you can get shots to look like, well, these.
All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this camera base and camera setting base version of Droner Tech, brought to you by RemotePilot101.com. If you wanna see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button or just write in the comments or do all the things you do to let us know that you do love and appreciate what we're making for you. And make sure, as always, that you stay fly.